بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبد رسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه تابعين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters, I don't think we understand the enemy that we're faced with. And in a climate of social political correctness, a lot of Muslims are quiet. Now, being quiet is an act of what? What kind of act is what? It's an act of cowardice. Now, the Prophet said in Hadith that if you see something wrong, change it with your hand. And if you cannot do it, then change it with your speech. And if you cannot do it, then hate in your heart. And that is the weakest of Iman. The problem is today, I don't know, are we, we're not talking about it. So definitely we should be hating in the heart. But this is where I think my main point will be today. Do we really hate it in the heart? Or have we become desensitized to it? And of course, there's nothing other than the agenda of the LGBTQ plus plus whatever. The way it started and the way we are, where we are today, it started something like, we don't like it. It was considered something totally wrong by the whole world. And then it went into a stage of almost like people were like, well, what can we do? And then it moved into a stage of, well, it's their own issue. Like, it's not my business. I don't need to worry about it. And of course, the Muslims were in the same situation. We're saying the same thing. Then it moved into another stage of desensitization where people didn't care anymore. Well, everyone can be their own. It doesn't matter. God created people, especially in the Judeo-Christian sphere. You started seeing more and more people from that community come in about being pastors, preachers, rabbis, you name it. And all of a sudden, then you had the Muslim imams coming or representing that community, even opening up masajid that inclined towards that type of behavior. And then it went to, from that face to a propagation face. How about you also embrace this kind of behavior? So it's like desensitization and now it's leading to the testing face. It's being pushed on people so much, on children, through the curriculum, through media. And people are now, because we're losing our morality, and not to mention that our deen is, in terms of knowledge, we're affected. We don't really practice Islam as we used to do. We don't really have the knowledge that we used to do. So if we don't have that protection, now it's reached to the point where people don't have that cover, that shield. We're so open and with our sexuality and so open in not having haya to the point where people start saying, well, hey, I might as well try it. It sounds interesting. It looks interesting. The way the movies, the songs portray it, like it's something that is so romanticized, is so nice. And heterosexual straight relationships are pretty much attacked. Oh, it's bad. You cannot even do this. Um, it's bad behavior, divorces, look how bad men are, look how bad women are. Being heterosexual now is something of an um, anomaly. There was a professor at one of the universities who was asking his class to make a point to prove why you should be heterosexual and not bisexual or gay. Like you have to now prove it as to why you should be. It's almost like the default or the normality is to be queer. So it's reached to that point. And indeed, if you look at it, if you look into our communities where people now, they don't really get affected by seeing these things. They don't really be like, oh, this is disgusting. And I would argue it's a lot more, and I know people are going to hate me first, but look at the statistics and look at what's happening around. It's a lot more on the women's side. Why? Because women are easier to convince. Look, and you want me to give you more proof on that not just from the Islamic perspective, we know that very, very well. And when the Dijal is going to come, the Prophet told us that men will be tying their women in the, in the house. Look at around us at today's purchasing power. Who is being influenced the most? Who is being targeted by ads and marketing? Women, mostly. Yeah, men as well. I'm not saying that men are just so strong and they cannot be swayed. But indeed, women more. And indeed, the 
incident rate on the female side, on our sister's side, is so much more in being influenced by this LGBTQ. How many brothers come to me? And they say, look, we reached the last stage of our vetting for marriage. And somehow we get into this discussion about LGBTQ. And we ask the sister, well, she's like, well, it's not a big deal. Maybe, I'll, okay, the guy's nasty, but the girls is, you know, I don't mind if I see girls doing it or it's not a big deal, like stuff like that. And the guy's like shocked. They come to me as a counselor and they ask me, should I continue marriage with this kind of woman? And I would say, be careful because it shows that the woman has been desensitized. And the same with the guys, the same with the guys. But I think because the guys, they get emasculated. It's a, it's really a, a blow to their masculinity if they kind of get involved in this type of stuff. It is a bit more difficult. I'm not saying it's not existent. It is a bit more difficult. I think we're at the testing phase, phase right now where a lot of Muslims are starting to look at that movement and be, look at the Netflixes and all the videos and all the um, songs that are being pushed out, watching them and saying, hey, maybe I'll try it. I wouldn't mind trying this. I might try it. I might something around those lines. I, I don't, I, it doesn't really bother me as much. And then obviously, you know, what can follow next. How many cases of LGBT or same sex attraction do I deal with on every single day? How many complaints from husbands and wives and parents that their children, I'm talking about practicing Muslims falling prey to this. Why? If people, everyone's born either straight or gay. No, this is a huge misconception. There is no such thing as everyone's just born straight or gay. Of course, you're born on the fitra, which Allah created you upon. Men like women, women like men. But that fitra is easily corruptible. One of the greatest problems that we have is that we don't lower our gaze. And tell their believing men to lower their gaze and to protect their private parts. This is from everything. On the street, and it starts there on the street where people just look at each other. They don't care. There's no more lowering the gaze. Everyone looks at you, stares at you, and you get desensitized. And then what happens next? Oh, you don't guard your private parts to everything. And the looking can happen to everything. Some people say, well, I'm not looking on the street. I'm not doing this, but I'm looking at porn or movies. Lowering the gaze is for everything on Instagram, on TikTok, on the street, on Netflix. You shouldn't be there, by the way, right? like to watch these kind of things. And guess what? Allah doesn't say and say to the believing men to lower their gaze against women. No, lower your gaze from everything, even from men. And the Prophet ﷺ, for example, he did not allow the Sahaba to look at beardless young men. Why? It's apparent why. You know exactly why. And then Allah Subhanahu goes to say in the same surah, وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ And tell the believing women to lower their gaze and to protect their private parts. Women also have to lower their gaze. Women also have to not look at men. And women have also not to look at women. And this is one of the greatest problems, what I say, when it comes to the issue of lesbianism or bisexualism within women, that it's more predominant. It's because women find it's okay to look at each other. It's okay to, to open up to each other. It's okay. We're just women. You get this whole excuse that we're just women. It's normal for us. And it's not because the Allah says to Lord, the guest. he didn't say from the women, from the men, but from the men and the women. And that's why there's the concept of the, uh, your, your aura. And even women are supposed to cover themselves in front of each other. There's a, still an aura that's observed between women and women. You have these countries. I'm not going to name them again. Because people are going to get very uncomfortable, but there's hammams, public baths where women are naked next to each other. While the Prophet said, for a believing woman, she believes in all that they should not go to take a bath in a public bath. It's hadith. And men the same, just going, being in front of each other, naked and so on, nakedness. And oh, I'm straight. I was born this way. I'm never. Look how many men have straight and have fallen. What do you think these numbers are coming from? From thin air? Why if everyone's born straight or this way or that way? No, because the fitra can be corrupted. And the shaitan is going to hit you and penetrate you through the desires and it's a fitna look at the story of Sayyidina Lut do you think the people of Lut the men were gay they were not gay they were bisexual a lot of people make this mistake how do you think they procreated of course they had intimate relationship with women as well because they had children but they were perverted 
they, as Lut says to them, do you take out your desires on men other than women? What do you think? The whole village is born gay? No, these men became gay. They were engaged in homosexual activity, bisexual activities. And what's interesting enough, enough that we miss sometimes this point is the wife of Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam, she was also corrupted because she was encouraging that. And look again, if you look at the main people who encourage these movements, even from our own land, support them, you'll find female names. I'm not saying that there's no men, but you'll find that female take this issue lightly. They laugh when they see gay guys. They befriend gay guys. They act very gay with other girls and sisters, touchy-feely. And by the way, it's not from the sunnah for girls to kiss each other every time they meet and to hug each other and to hold hands, nor is it for the men. But even the Prophet he barely, you don't see that the Prophet would kiss and hug the Sahaba just like that. In some cases, yes, they would hug. Uh, there's some instances, I think when Al-Abbas came, uh, where the Prophet hugged him. But in general, that's not what we see today. Everyone hugging and kissing and touching and playing and joking. Because this can lead to this door of shaitan being open. The hour has to be respected between men and men, men and women, women and women. The lowering of the gaze between men and men, women and women. It has to be respected on all levels, on the TV, on social media, whatever. And I think this is where it starts from. And remember, the shaitan is going to enter through those low desires. And everyone has them. It doesn't matter how good you are. You are a half in the Quran. You're a niqabi. You are a sheikh. You are this. The people that I deal with who are suffering from these things are very practicing people. Having same-sex attraction. Imams. Students of knowledge. Sisters in niqab. It's a, not a joke. It is happening so much. And that's why I said I only make videos and address these topics where it really gets, you know, the cup gets full. And indeed, this past few weeks has been getting very full with these kind of cases. And again, it prompted me to revisit, to read some articles, to understand what's going on, what's happening in this world. And indeed, scientists are even talking about it. And it goes back to show that it connects to the fitra. And it's subhanAllah, our behavior, the science, will confirm in the end what Islam says. That people are being corrupted. Of course, they don't use this term, but being influenced by media, by the feminist movement, subhanAllah, how there are studies who show that lesbianism has increased since the uh, freedom movement of females and women. And again, what the studies show is that women are easier to corrupt. Of course, they don't use this word, but to Influence, by the way, influence, right? Influencers, they're easier to corrupt. More, they call it sexual fluidity. And they're praising it. Yet, as we can see in Islam, this is not something praiseworthy, but something to be aware of. So when someone hears this, they should be aware. They should protect themselves as opposed to just letting themselves and be like, well, you know, that's how we are. We should just enjoy our life. And what can I do? Allah created me like this. No, Allah tests you like this. And the only solution for your salvation and protection is the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen, Islam. This is what the science shows. This is what Islam says, what it teaches, how to protect ourselves. If we don't, we will easily be influenced. People will be influenced. Our children are influenced. Our women are influenced. And as again, sorry, I'm sorry that you don't like the sisters, but sisters are easier, more influenced. And so far, the statistical difference if you look at statistics, 0 0.05 is, is a significant difference. You're talking about 10%. 10% difference. A huge difference. And it can be throughout their life, there can be a point where women can flip and switch and be like, hey, I'm going this way. And that's why I would say, and I end with this, that the Sharia is more strict on women. The hijab, the having the mahram. A lot of the rules and regulations that sisters complain sometimes about are only men there to protect you. Even the patriarchy, the men ruling over you, protecting you in a positive way, in a positive sense, I mean, is to protect you against yourself, against your own nafs and against the world outside against the shaitan. Of course, the man has the responsibility as a qawwam, but also he himself has to be good, and not a hypocrite and have a double standard. He has to continue to develop himself and to stay strong 
on the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.